Well, some of you reason like cultural relatives, relativists already. Sometimes you'll say things like, well, uh, that's what that culture does. It's not what we do. So, but since it's that culture, um, uh, it's okay that they're doing it that way. On the other hand, sometimes you reason uh, completely opposite of a cultural relativist. Sometimes you just say, look, it doesn't matter if the culture is doing that. Uh, it's simply wrong. Right? And yeah, there, there are cases. I mean, lots of cases of oppression, for example. So cultural relativism is kind of be kind of a mixed bag, and sometimes it seems helpful to us, and sometimes it doesn't. So in this chapter, Rachel takes a pretty hard look at cultural relativism, uh, and he uh, ultimately he's going to say that cultural relativism fails uh, overall. Uh, but he wants to say there are also just a couple of things that we can learn from cultural relativism. So to begin this examination of cultural relativism, we're going to look at the, uh, Rachel takes a look at the five main claims that cultural relativists tend to make. Now the first claim, uh, when you see this, well, it's kind of obvious, right? You just <laughs> need to look out into the world to see this true. And yeah, there is a lot of differences between cultures. Uh, the second claim of cultural relativism is pretty much the crux of it. And this is this idea that, um, that the culture is what determines what is right or wrong. If you want to know what's right or wrong, just simply look to what the culture says. And uh, if the culture, uh, if you try to say something contrary to the culture, well, then you, you utter or you or try to act contrary to the culture, then you are doing something wrong. Uh, another claim about the cultural relativists is that you, that there is no objective standard then for all of morality. Right? Since what is moral just depends upon what the culture says, what well, there's you know, there's no culture that encompasses all cultures. Okay, so there's just so there is no objective standard by which to uh, by which to make any moral judgments. You just have to rely on the culture. Kind of uh, similar to that, then, is that there's no way to judge a moral culture. Okay, um, all right, there's no way to judge a culture, especially within one's own context. Right? It would be at best arrogant for, say, I don't know. Uh, the United States to criticize, uh, you know, American culture to criticize, um, you know, the practice in Japan of bowing when greeting somebody. Right? That, that's kind of a motivating idea behind it. Uh, the next claim is kind of curious. You might wonder about this. <coughs> it's, the <coughs> it's the claim for tolerance. So, so the cultural relativist is saying, look, you know, since we can't judge other cultures, we ought to be tolerant of other cultures. We, we ought not to, uh, you know, it's kind of the opposite of arrogance. Right. Now, you wonder, might wonder whether that claim is supposed to be made within the American culture or, within, or whether it's supposed to be made outside of all cultures. And a lot turns on that depending on how you do it. So these are the five main claims of cultural relativism. So one very interesting project that we can do is to look at how these five claims of cultural relativism are supposed to be related to each other. Because so far what we have, and I'm not saying it's impossible, but what we, what we have is not really an argument for all five claims, right? They're just kind of stated. Well, one wonders, you know, is one supposed to prove the other? Is, you know, one supposed, are all the other four supposed to come from the other, from one? Something like this. So one way to go about looking at this is to see, you know, a lot of cultural relativists are going to argue that the first claim implies the second. All right? This is what's called the cultural differences argument. Okay, So the idea is, well look, there's, there's a great variety of differences in moral cultures. Okay, uh, You don't have to look very far to see where this is true. Anywhere from manners to some of the extreme cases of life and death that Rachel mentions in uh, the book. So one way to uh, one way to argue there is say, look, since there's this difference in the cultures, um, it follows that whatever, is, whatever the culture says is moral just is what's moral. Right? That difference in culture means different moral codes. Or, sorry, <laughs> differences, in moral, moral, uh, differences in cultures and moral codes means that there's different moralities. There's actual different uh, claims to morality depending upon when and where you are. Right? So to take kind of a look at this, we're going to put it again into uh, numbered propositional form. And the first premise is, is the obvious one. It's the ones you don't have to look very far to find out whether it's true. And that's the, that's the claim that there, are, that there are cultural differences. Now it's the second premise 
that's really doing most of the work. Right? It's the conditional. If there's a difference in cultures, then there's uh, then there's no uh, th then whatever is moral just depends upon the culture. And this conclusion follows once again using our good friend modus ponens. Um, so, like I said, the first premise probably isn't the one you want to go after. It's just pretty obvious. It's the second premise that Rachel's disagrees with. And he does this in, in kind of an interesting way, and it's a very real observation here. Uh, the observation is, look, cultures differ on a lot of different topics. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, today, culture, at least in the West, cultures are really consistent as far as mathematics, but that didn't used to be the case. For a while, there was a really heated argument about whether there's the number zero. Right? And different cultures had different points of view. Uh, cultures have taken different stances and approaches to making scientific claims. Okay? Um, history. Right? <laughs> Depending upon which culture you're looking at, you're going to get a very different account of history. Now, since there's this difference uh, amongst cultures in these other fields, uh, we, you know, we, we might say, well, why isn't... Why don't we make the claim that, well, history just depends upon when and where you are? Or that math just depends upon when and where you are, or science? Right? We're not at all tempted to do that. So why is it that we're now all of a sudden tempted to do that with morality? Okay? Um, and yeah, we could push the point even further. Okay? You know, if we're going to point to this difference in cultures uh, as a reason to say, well, then there's this difference in morality. Well, as a matter of fact, cultures don't really agree upon cultural relativism. Okay? Sure, some cultures do. Right? We saw some examples in the text. But most cultures are really sure that their morality <laughs> applies to everybody else as well. Okay? So, it, if we're going to say, well, since there's this difference in the cultures, then uh, there's, there's this different morality. Well, there's differences about whether uh, the second premise of cultural relativism is true, so that only depends upon when and where you are. Okay. Well, if that's true, then most of the cultures on the planet deny that premise, and they really strongly believe in some kind of absolute moral truth that applies to everybody. So that's perhaps one way uh, to start looking at it. Um, ultimately, you know, not ultimately, but what Rachel's concludes is that the first premise uh, does not imply uh, the second premise. Sure, there's differences of cultures, but that doesn't mean there's now a difference in truth. Um, you know, you, this, of course, we're, we can further discuss this in class, but uh, so far, um, uh, you know, so far the, this reasoning is pretty good, right? If, if you're going to say that since there's this difference in morality, a difference in moral beliefs across cultures, therefore there's a difference in morality, you've got to explain why morality is a special case when we don't have that, when we don't, we don't apply it to science, math, and history. Another way to look at cultural relativism is to see how it's related to, uh, you know, how it implies or how it, how it impacts what you already believe. Um, so one thing about cultural relativism is, uh, you know, since we have this claim that what is moral just depends upon what the culture says, then it has kind of the odd conclusion that uh, whatever the culture says is right. But that means that there's nothing wrong ever in a culture. There's nothing wrong ever in a culture. And you don't think this is true. You think there are cultures that have done some things that are really obviously wrong. There are cultures that oppress people. Okay? The Third Reich is one of the most popular examples to point to. It was a culture. Okay? It was a very different set of beliefs that a group of people had. They had practices, the whole spiel. Um, but they did some really, really horrible things. Now, according to that culture, it was just fine. Um, but that's wrong. Right? It was really wrong, the things that they did. So, if you, uh, if you say that there's, uh, if you subscribe to some version of cultural relativism, right, that whatever the culture does is right, then there's absolutely nothing that the culture does that's wrong. And again, that, you know, this has this impact regarding uh, whether you can judge that culture. I hope you say you can judge the Third Reich. Right? I really, really do. <laughs> and it was wrong. So, uh, you already think that there's something that, that a culture can improve. Right? Well, if they can improve, 
then whatever the culture says, it's not, it's not true that whatever the culture says is right. Well, there's uh, this next implication consequence is really kind of related to the first, right? Just as, you know, if we say that there's no way that we, that, you know, excuse me, if we buy the claim that cultural relativism says that whatever culture says is right, then not only is it the case that no, you know, every culture is doing anything right, and anything what the culture says to do, well, that's right. Well, that also applies to our culture, all right? If we, uh, if we say, as a culture, you know, if we buy the cultural relativist line, then whatever our culture does is right. Uh, that means that our culture should never change, okay? And you really think that's wrong. <laughs> I guarantee you think that's wrong. Because that means, for instance, um, that anybody who tries to change the culture uh, is doing something wrong. Now, that means that Martin Luther King, Rosa Parks, these people were wrong were mistaken in what they were doing. They were acting contrary to the culture. And if cultural relativism is right, then they were not, <laughs> not trying to uh, advance progress, they were trying to be revolutionaries. They are trying to overthrow <laughs> what was right. And um, we don't want to say that. We quite obviously and rightfully believe that Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks were doing the right thing. And I think yeah, I think that you agree with this. I think you agree with this. So with, with this claims of cultural relativism, well, you, you have a choice. Either you give up cultural relativism or you give up the idea of moral progress. Um, and I really hope you give up cultural relativism and you keep the idea of moral progress. So the last claim we're really going to look at here is this idea of tolerance. Now, I think tolerance is a good thing. Uh, I hope you think <laughs> tolerance is a good thing. Um, in fact, you know, tolerance is, is something that we should aspire, aspire to, and we probably ought to learn how to apply more in our lives. Now, a lot of people want to be cultural relativists because they're inspired by tolerance, and, and I get the motivation, I really do. Uh, but as we've seen, uh, cultural relativism doesn't really imply tolerance. Right? It implies this idea that we're right, nobody else is, and um, <laughs> you know, kind of on top of that, um, just as a matter of fact, I don't really know of many cultures that are especially tolerant. Okay, um, every culture has its kind of dark history as far as this is concerned, um, and you know, really no. No culture is innocent as far as, as far as, I mean, just think of your most outrageous example of one group oppressing another. Trust me, it's happened. Okay, it's happened. So, you know, this is kind of an important claim. Remember I uh, said that, you know, we, you know, earlier when I was talking about this fifth claim, you've got to wonder if that uh, claim to tolerance is made within our culture or made outside the culture. Well, if the claim to tolerance is made within our culture, uh, then, you know, the, and you're trying to be a culture relativist, then you shouldn't be tolerant. Because our culture, in fact, just isn't that tolerant. Um, we, uh, you know, we make some pretty harsh claims sometimes. And I'm not even just talking about racial inequalities. Of course, that's there. Right? We are definitely not at all fa uh, 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 favorable towards any kind of socialism. Right? We do not like socialism in any way, shape, or form. Uh, where there, there are plenty of cultures that, um, either in the past or currently, prefer socialism. I think that's the way to go. Right. So as a matter of fact, we're just not that tolerant. Right. Um, so, so that claim to tolerance really can't be made within our culture. Uh, so the question is, well, is it made regardless of what culture you're in? And that's probably the way to go. If you're claiming uh, tolerance and uh, you want to say uh, that you know, tolerance is a value you should have regardless of what culture you're in, well, then you are not a cultural relativist because um, now you're appealing to some kind of value independent of the culture. Right? So if you want to be tolerant, if you want to argue for tolerance, you probably want to argue from some sort of objectivist moral view or, or some objective moral view or absolute moral view where this is going to be true regardless of what a culture says. So this is an interesting problem 
for cultural relativism. They want to be tolerant, but it doesn't look like they can claim any way to be tolerant that doesn't disagree with cultural relativism. Finally, the last thing we're going to look at is uh, well, the first claim of cultural relativism is that there's this difference among cultures. And that's true, right? You don't have to look very long to find out uh, that there's differences in moral codes. However, there's also quite a lot of similarity. Right? Uh, what, what is meant by this is that there, there are principles that are the same. There are values that are the same, but they're expressed differently from culture to culture. So every culture uh, in some way, shape, or form, values family, right? Or it's a principle that family is very important and you should look after family, okay? Um, in American culture, it expresses this one way. Um, you, see, you see it expressed differently in other cultures. So other cultures, for instance, uh, the family is, is very important and decisions about your future are made within that family, okay? Uh, for the sake of the family, because family is all you got. Family is how you, you stick together. Uh, every culture has some notion of what's polite, okay? But what counts as polite differs from culture to culture, okay? In the States, you, you know, if I'm going to greet a friend, um, you know, shaking hands is acceptable. If it's a good friend, giving a hug is acceptable. Um, whereas uh, in other cultures, um, for instance, uh, uh, Japan, you bow. Okay, and there's even rules regarding that, whether you make eye contact or not, and how low you bow, depending upon who the other person is. So there's, there are differences in how values are expressed, but the values themselves tend to be really consistent across cultures. So the point that Rachel is making here is there's not as much difference, right? It's not just willy-nilly. <laughs> it's not just, you know, completely uh, uh, dissimilar moral codes across the planet. No, there's a lot of similarity in moral codes. So, all in all, cultural relativism uh, can't succeed. <laughs> It can't succeed according to its own reasons. It disagrees with itself. So uh, that could be a significant problem for cultural relativism. Now, Rachel wants to be careful here, right? He, he's a little unclear as to exactly what he means. I mean, he wants to say something like, there's still some good things about cultural relativism, and, he, and he's right, right? So the, this idea of uh, tolerance, okay? That's a very good thing, and we should strive to keep that. Now, as we said, with, with tolerance, uh, you're going to probably have to point to some kind of objective moral theory in order to show that tolerance is moral. Um, or maybe it's, it's one of the values or principles. You, you, there's got to be more of a story there. Rachel says that there are two things that uh, we could also learn from cultural relativism. And the first is that the culture is not the definitive word on what is moral. And yeah, that's that's true. I mean, this is a lesson that we get from looking at cultural relativism and seeing how, you know, it kind of fails, right? Because uh, cultural relativism says, no, the culture is the definitive word. Well, we've seen that, uh, you know, this doesn't cohere with what we already think is true, that there is such a thing as moral progress. So, the, you know, the cautionary tale here is uh, when we're trying to figure out what is moral, uh, you know, culture might be a source of evidence, but it's not going to be definitive. It's not probably going to be the predominant. It's not going to be the decisive factor, at least in most cases, as to what's moral. Another lesson to learn is to keep an open mind. Okay, So the idea here is um, that you yourself are in a culture. Okay, You're a product of a culture, and your culture has told you that some things are moral and some things aren't moral. And it's not to say that the, your culture is automatically mistaken. Right? We're, not, we're not saying that. But on the other hand, uh, you ought to realize that uh, your culture is not impeccable or infallible. Okay? So when you're thinking about what's moral, sure, consult your culture, um, but don't immediately disregard anything because it's contrary to your culture, especially when you're dealing with other cultures. Right? There are lots of things we can learn, uh, that cultures can learn from each other. Uh, I'm a big fan of saying that uh, every culture has perfected something, right? Uh, uh, Japan perfected raw fish. <laughs> um, uh, the, 
countries in the, the southern part of North America, Central America, and the northern part of Southern America, the, a lot of the Latin, Latin America countries right there, they perfected the casual men's dress shirt. I'm a huge fan of Guayavetas. Um, yeah, so yeah, there's definitely something that each culture can learn from each other, you know, specifically uh, how moral reasoning is going to apply in different cases, especially in cases of life and death. So we learn these lessons from cultural relativism, not so much because they're consistent with cultural relativism, but because uh, we find that these things are more important than uh, some of the claims that, multi that cultural, relativ cultural relativism makes.